Once upon a time, there lived a young lady called Adaora. She lives in a small village in eastern Nigeria where she works as a nurse in a small hospital. Adaora has three siblings and her parents are well known around the village as her mother is a nurse and her father a popular merchant. Adaora's parents were comfortable to some extent, but despite this, Adaora was never satisfied with whatever they give to her. Her siblings and parents would often preach to her about being content, but Adaora would turn deaf ears and steal from people around her, both at home and at work. One day, Adaora was walking along a forest path after leaving work when she found a bunch of plantain lying around. She looked around to see if anyone was watching. As soon as she was sure that no one was there, she picked up the bunch of plantain and ran off. When she got home, she lied to her family that she bought the plantain from her pocket and everyone ate the plantain without hesitation. That midnight, the family could not sleep as they kept going to the toilet one after the other. A few hours later, her father sensed that something was wrong. He called Adaora to ask her where she got the plantain from. Adaora lied again that she bought it with her money. But her father replied that he knew she was lying because she hardly buy things from the family. Hadara acted pissed. She told her father, So, this is a thank you I get for trying to be a better person, right? Father, I'm not happy that you could doubt me and it really hurts me greatly. Hadara sobs and goes to her room. The next morning, Pa Hadara and the rest of the family were very weak due to the frequent visit to the toilet. They were weak to the extent that they couldn't get up from their beds. Adara, sensing danger, began to confess. She told her dad that she found the plantain on the forest path and she took it since no one was there. Her father exclaimed he was angry at her for lying and even getting angry for telling lies. Adara, Adara, her father called as he laid on his bed in excruciating pain. I think the plantain you stole was poisoned. That was why I asked you yesterday if you truly bought the plantain. Why are you hell-bent on bringing pain to your family? Hadara, his father, said angrily. Hadara did not know what to say. She started apologizing to her parents and siblings, but none of them listened to her apology. They all hissed and moved away from her as she tried to continue to apologize. Her father got up immediately and walked to his doctor friend's house holding his stomach in pains. He begged his friend to give him an antidote to a poisoned food, and luckily for him, the doctor asked some at his home. Her father gave the other members of the family the antidote, and they all felt better within minutes. Adara's father, however, did not give Adara the antidote on time to teach her a lesson, but her mother had to plead for him to give it to her when she was losing too much strength. He reluctantly gave her the antidote after warning her severely not to ever take what doesn't belong to her anymore. Hanadaura swore with her life that she would never do such again, especially with their near-death experience. However, Hadaura did not keep stealing like she promised. Instead, she became more discreet about it and her family were happy, thinking that she had become a better person. One day, Hadaura was at work attending to a parent when she heard two women talking about a strange crying old man who just got to their village. According to the woman telling the story, the man has been a target for thieves for days now because he's wearing an expensive watch worth millions, but no one has been able to remove the wristwatch no matter how much they tried. The strange thing is that the man has been pleading and crying for someone to take off the wristwatch but the watch has remained stuck on his wrist and nobody knows why. Hadara was shocked to hear this. She was surprised that nobody had tried cutting off the man's hands to take the wristwatch. On her way home that day, she went to see the man. She was surprised to see a lot of people trying to remove the wristwatch as she watched from a distance. At a point, the man fainted and all the people ran away. Minutes later, Hadara moved closer and with the help of a few people still waiting, the man was resuscitated and taken to her hospital. 
The doctor attended to him and he was stable. He asked Adara while she was back at the hospital instead of going home. But Adara lied that she found the man on her way home and decided to help him. Later that night, Adara sneaked into the hospital ward where the man was sleeping. She tried to remove the wristwatch, but it did not come off. She kept trying to remove it until two days passed. Luckily for her, or so she thought, the wristwatch came off easily on the third day. Hadara was very happy. She stared at the wristwatch in surprise and jumped up in happiness. I will become the richest young lady in this village and every man will bow at my feet, Hadara thought aloud. Just then, the man opened his eyes and he checked his wrist to find out the watch was gone. He looked at Adara with pity and he said, It is exactly seven years today when I found the wristwatch. So the prophecy is true. Welcome to your seven years of mystery, the man told Adara and heaved a heavy sigh. He thanked Adara for saving his life and helping him have his life back. Hadara did not understand. She told him that she was not going to give back the watch, but she promised to give him some share from what she gets from selling it. But to her surprise, the man told her to keep all the money she would make in selling the watch. Hadara did not think much of it as she left the old man. When she got to her office, she tried the watch on and surprisingly, it remained stuck on her hands. She tried to remove it. But the watch remained stuck on her wrist. She kept struggling to remove the watch, but she gave up after a while. As she sat down inside the office, she began to think of how to spend the money she would be getting from the sales of the wristwatch. A few minutes later, a colleague in Kechi came in. She asked Adara whom she was looking for. Adara was surprised. She asked in Kechi, Are you okay? Why are you asking me such a question? Inkechi was dumbfounded because the voice sounded so much like Adara's voice, but the person she's seeing is different. Inkechi quickly ran out and she went to call her other colleagues. They all went inside the office together and they were surprised to see an old woman sitting on Adara's chair. Inkechi asked her colleagues if the person sitting down looks like Adara, and they asked her why she would ask such a question when it's glaring that this is an old woman. When Adara heard this, she quickly brought out a mirror and she was shocked to see the reflection of an old woman staring back at her. She screamed and dropped the mirror and it broke into pieces. She ran out of the office and continued screaming as she ran off. She met the man who owned the wristwatch and asked him to take it back. But when the man looked up, he looked younger and entirely different from the man who was there three hours ago. The man told her that he was a young man and the wristwatch made him age quicker when he wore it. She asked him to take it back, but the man replied, I'm sorry, but there is nothing I can do about it. I have been looking for how to get the wristwatch off for years now, so you must understand the kind of relief I felt when you were able to remove it. Adara held the man by the hand and she began to beg him. The man replied that there was nothing he could do about it. She asked to wait for seven years for the spell to wear off. Adara exclaimed and began to cry, but the man broke free from her grip and ran off. Adara knelt there crying, not knowing what to do. After a while, she covered her face with a scarf as she began to welcome. Her mother was sitting on the porch reading a paper when she got home. She greeted her mother and rushed inside. Her mother watched as she walked in with quick steps and she went after her. She asked her why she's covering her face and why she rushed inside the room. But Adara did not know what to say. She sat on her bed crying. She told her mother that she needed some time alone and she promised to talk to her later that day. After trying to make her talk without success, her mother left reluctantly. Adara sat on the bed. Remembering all the times her parents and siblings had wondered about taking what doesn't belong to her. That night, Adara's mother went to her again to see if she was fine when she did not come out of her room. 
Adara did not know how to explain what happened to her mother. After a few minutes, she removed the covering on her face and her mother jumped up from the bed. She asked her what happened to her and Adara explained to her mother. Her mother busted into tears. She tried to remove the wristwatch but it remained stuck. She could not tell Adara's father for fear of him being hungry with her. She asked Adara where the man lives so they could see him to take back the watch but Adara replied that she doesn't know where he lives. Her mother had to tell her father and he was very hungry with her. They later found the young man who owned the wristwatch after months of searching and he explained to them that he stole the wristwatch from an old homeless man who turned out to be a young chap after he wore the wristwatch just like it happened to Adara. According to the man, his father inherited the wristwatch from his father and he specifically told him to wait for seven years before wearing the wristwatch. However, he decided to wear it one day to show off to his friends at a party. He said he became an old man right there at the party while he was dancing with his girlfriend. She ran off in horror and since that day, his life changed for worse. His colleagues at work did not recognize him anymore and his employer sacked him over the phone after waiting for him to come to the office for days. The man then advises Adara to wait for seven years for the cost to wear off as that was the only solution. Adara began to cry again as she heard this. Her mother blamed her for her predicaments as she asked her why she likes taking things that doesn't belong to her despite everything they've done to satisfy her. From that day, Hadara could not go out without using a veil and people around her began to wonder why she's always covering her face. Three years later, Hadara began to fall ill. She lost her hearing at first, then her sight, and then she had rheumatism and other forms of sicknesses that happened to old people. Her parents and siblings had to stand by her and care for her. She got well after being in and out of hospital, but her life did not remain the same as she did not regain her sight. Hadawa would cry every day and regret her actions in the past. She thought that she was being punished for doing wrong. Seven years later, Hadawa woke up one morning and she was able to remove the wristwatch successfully. She screamed in joy as she became young again. But to her surprise, her sight did not return. Her blindness is the price she had to pay for her covetousness. Hadara was happy to be finally free from the spell. She took the wristwatch to the young man it belonged to and together they cut it into many pieces and buried the different parts deep inside the forest where no one could reach it again. Hadara got her life back after seven years but she paid dearly for it. This story teaches us to be contented with whatever we have and not be drawn to flashy things as they can be deceiving. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.